Hello, welcome to this quick tip brought to you by Go Engineer. My name is John Nikoloff. I am an applications engineer at Go Engineer, and today I would like to follow up on a webinar that I did in August. Unfortunately, I ran a drop test, and after I ran that drop test, I used that data in a design study, and I didn't go back to show the audience the results of that. So today, I would like to revisit this so that we can address the really cool features and really simple features of a drop test. So what is a drop test anyways? Um, it's a very simple setup, generally involves gravity. We are dropping something from a certain height and it will approach a wall that can have dampening constraints without dampening constraints, something other than say a concrete wall. We can say maybe if it has a uh, dampening coefficient similar to wood, we can input that. Um, and likewise, we don't necessarily need to just drop it from a certain height. We can give it a certain velocity. So we can say that our item is accelerating towards this wall with uh, this many meters per second of velocity in this direction. Or we can say it's going to fall into this plane from this height and gravity is accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared, at least on Earth. So if you wanted to change that to another planet, you can also change that. Or you can change it to uh, Earth's gravitational constant. Here I have my drop test simulation open. Uh, when you load this into SolidWorks, the only option that we're really going to have is this setup option right here. I'm going to right click and define and edit the definition of this setup of a drop test. And here I've specified that I'm going to drop this drone frame from 10 meters. And the right plane is selected to be where my gravity acceleration is normal to denoted in that red triangle. So right now it's going to be falling in uh, this direction, in the uh, x-coordinate direction. The reason why I'm doing the drop test first is so that I can process my results, find the stress, show my stress plot. I'm also going to play it so we can animate this. Note when you do load the animation first, it will have to render through its first calculated steps and then after that it's it runs a little bit more smoother. So this is really great because it also gives us our plot on the right side of the screen to give us a stress result of what we're actually seeing, what the colors mean. And it's a great visualization for anyone who isn't in the engineering field so that you can better translate your results to another team or other members inside your team. And right now it's really fascinating that we can see the force distributed through the objects. Kind of the plus side of having it render a little bit slowly. And then once it gets running, obviously, yes, the animation works, is great. But another great feature that's not just animating it and making it look good, I will list the interaction force and friction force. This will allow us to select the faces that we are curious about, so, and at a particular time step. So if we want to figure out what the impact of a certain face was, at the beginning of the impact, we can change this time step, say it change it to something close to the initial moment in microseconds, so two microseconds, or uh, seven microseconds. Let's select these front faces that interacted with our plane. Then we'll click update to visualize what forces were experienced at those faces. We can also bump up later in the time uh, in the time step. Go to ten set uh, ten plot or plot number ten, and then at the end of our <clears throat> impact, uh, looking at the ending result in force to get us a better plot of the entire time uh, this face is interacting with that face. All right. So now that we have gone through drop test with just a distance, let's do a drop test with the force. This would be a good use for engineers and designers that are able to calculate the actual velocity. If you also wanted to guess the velocity, you can do that uh, by going back into the setup. Right click and edit definition. We're going to 
select velocity at impact. I also chose two meters per second because I figured, hey, why not guess it? I could calculate it, but luckily uh, we can just guess and see what our resultants are. Show the stress results. Make sure we're selecting the right faces. And then we'll go back into the list interaction friction force and we'll select these two faces that interacted with our impact wall. And just like before, we'll go back through the time steps to see uh, how close that drop actually equates to a 20 meter per second velocity of impact. And looks like it was almost, it was pretty close. A pretty decent guess, going up to 10 plus that number 10. And this would be really great in case you need to cross-reference, okay, yeah, you'll have this much of an impact at this height, though what is the impact really going to do to the model at a certain velocity? And with that, this concludes this quick tip on drop testing, one of the simple tools of Simulation Professional. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this quick tip, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to be informed on when we upload new videos to our channel, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for tuning in to Go Engineers Quick Tip, your number one online resource for SolidWorks CFD and FEA simulations. Thank you.